gosh, is that baby dog? Yeah, come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on, baby dog. Woo! Look at that. Freaking. We are locked and loaded, baby. Ain't nobody coming in there, man. My babies. Hi, guys. So happy that you're home. Aren't you happy your friends are home, Rich? Right? You're happy, right? Those are your lizards, dude. Oh, what is going on, guys? Good freaking day, man. It is absolutely gorgeous out here today. Look at this. Beautiful South Florida day. So good. Life is good, man. This weekend sucked, man. I've been dealing with all sorts of crap lately. And uh, obviously the whole rhino iguana situation really put a damper on things. So today, today we're just gonna take care of some animals. Talk about what the hell happened. It's just, it's absolutely crazy. Like even I was reading some comments yesterday on the video and people just don't, like, dude, I got so many crazy emails about, dude, somebody said somebody, they know somebody that came on a boat and took them, but all their information didn't add up, their VIP, their v, VIP addresses, VPN addresses, I don't know, whatever it is. They had like burner phones, there was just so many sketchy scenarios. Some Another person commented saying that they were in a trash can three doors down, and then they wouldn't respond to us, and just like so many sketchy things happened about this that like just made me not feel safe on my own property which is crazy and that's honestly one of the downsides about doing youtube and having your life so out there is that you know there's a lot of crazy people out in the world and you know people do stupid things and like dude who would come steal somebody's animals a lot of people even said i was reading yesterday there was a bunch of comments about people thought that i was like they were like oh you're just a, a fake youtuber now just making making shit up to get views. Why would I do that? Dude, I... Yeah, I guess I am a, a YouTuber. Now. Kind of. Part-time. Dude, I'm a tattoo artist. I own a tattoo shop. A clothing company. Like, it's... This isn't... I'm not, I'm not doing this for views. You know what I mean? I'm not here staging stuff and faking things. Why would I fake that some of my favorite animals got stolen? You know what I mean? Like, dude, that's crazy. But... Lesson learned, man. Dude, I'm. This place is like freaking Fort Knox right now. Literally, I had. I already had a couple green cameras outside, but that they they were crap. They didn't work very well, and they didn't get anything. All they got was my lawn guys. I talked to the lawn people about everything. Obviously, go figure. My lawn people don't speak English, um, but their supervisor. I guess he talked to them about it. Nobody, I guess the lawn people weren't in, weren't in the cage at all. So, dude, I strongly believe some stupid kid came here, or kids, whatever it is, came here trying to mess with me, broke into the cage, they stole the iguanas, we put them on blast, they got scared. Obviously, you can't sell them anywhere. Everybody all over the world knows what my iguanas look like. They know they were stolen. So what are you going to do? You're not going to be able to sell them to anybody because they're going to just get caught. So what do they do? Maybe they just brought them back. Um, a lot of things that people don't understand about Cyclura, rhino iguanas, um, they're very territorial animals. They, in the wild, like, they normally stick to a certain spot. They have, like, a spot that is their home. They sleep at night, so they have their little nesting areas. They always sleep in really the same nesting area, like my buddy Tom down south, Crutchfield, um, my buddy Jason, a few other of my friends have free-range Cyclura on their property that don't ever leave, they're not in cages. They just, they know that that's where their home is. My boy has a couple of them that they roam his yard all day and then at night they, they go in the little doggy door and they sleep in the garage. Like these, these animals are like dogs. Like people don't realize how smart these animals are and how bonded they are with me. They know I'm their owner, they know I feed them, they know I pet them, I give them affection. Like they, dude, they love me. Especially Khaleesi, you see how she acts with me. As soon as I walk into the cage, she sits on my lap. Likes to be pet, she licks me and all that stuff. So yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty crazy, man. Like, I just, the more scenarios I think about and the more I try to figure out what the hell happened, I just, I'm set on somebody came, they stole them, we put them on blast, they got scared, they came back, they released them. 
yeah, maybe they didn't do it the right way. They should have did it a little better. But, I mean, obviously I found them, and that's the most important part in their home. Hey, Richard, what are you eating, Rich? Hey, don't you eat the grass, tiny dog. That is not for tiny dogs. Richard's doing amazing. Richard, you just turned six months old. Mm. Mm, my little baby boy. Six months old. You're getting so big, dude. Getting so big. Cool, so I just wanted to start this video off with just talk, talking about that real quick and just clear the air just because I was, you know, couldn't go to sleep last night because I'm so freaking paranoid about, like, people... It sucks, bro. Like, I, this is my house. Like, I want to feel safe here. You know what I mean? And now I got to, like, I mean, I've, I normally sleep with, you know, I always have guns next to my bed and stuff. But, like, le dude, legitimately yesterday, like, it was me, Richard, and a pistol. You know what I mean? Like, and something was in my backyard yesterday. Like, I, there was probably, like, a raccoon or something because there's a there's mango tree next to my house. So the mangoes fall at night. So we have all these, like, raccoons and cats and other little things that they come in my backyard and they eat the mangoes that fall on the floor. So I just heard something outside last night. Obviously, I got to grab my pistol, come outside, and check my property. Like, dude, it sucks. Like, it sucks being paranoid in your own house, you know, especially when, like, this weekend I have a tattoo convention. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not even going to be in town. So I have to make sure my security system is on absolute point. And I'm going to have, have to, have, now I have to pay people to stay at my house. So like, it just sucks. It's just like, it's just like your safety is gone. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it blows. And the things that you have to deal with being a YouTuber and having so many eyes on you all the time or being on TV or whatever the case is, I've done a lot of things. Um, you know, people don't realize how vulnerable it makes you, you know? So, yeah, this weekend I just got to buckle down. My buddy's going to be staying here all weekend while I'm gone, who is going to have lots of guns with him and stuff like that. So definitely don't come near my freaking house. Stay strapped. Get clapped. That's going to be the new motto. So keep that in mind. Next time try freaking with my animals. So let's go inside. I got some stuff to frosting. Uh, Batman and Robin need to eat. I gotta feed all the little stuff. I'm not gonna bother making some crazy video feeding a bunch of little tiny snakes. So, but we're definitely gonna feed Rusty because that's always awesome. I got a big chondro in the sink right now to frosting for him. So that's gonna be super tasty. It's a pretty big snake too. He's probably like a four foot chondro. So we're gonna go inside, we're gonna feed Russ. Probably gonna end up taking him out, show you guys how big he's gotten because I feel like last time I did that was maybe a month ago. It is absolutely insane how fast this snake grows even in just a month. Dude, Rusty is pushing eight feet long. It is nuts. So let's go get to it. All right, here we go. Russ, how you doing, my dude? He's just in there hanging out, chilling. I got my new assistant camera guy here today. I want to introduce you guys to him. His name is Trimundo. What's up, bro? How you doing? Glad that you're joining the team today. All right, so rule number one, like I always tell people, don't ever do venomous by yourself, okay? You have venomous animals at home that can potentially kill you. Always have somebody at least on call at your house ready. If any, if shit hits the fan, you just want to be careful, okay? Today, I'm super busy. I'm just trying to get a video out for you guys today. So that's the only reason why I'm doing it by myself. So we're going to be very extra careful today, right? Right, Russ? Good thing my dude Russ, he's been... His temperament now is so much better, dude. Now, I'm sure he could... Dude, the smell on these guys is absolutely fantastic. So I'm sure now that I'm defrosting that snake, it's crazy. As soon as I start defrosting snakes and stuff, he knows. Like, he smells stuff. Look, he's flicking his tongue. He's checking things out. He's such a smart animal. Look at him. He's looking at the camera. He's looking at the microphone on the camera like, yo, dad, what the hell is that thing? But dude, look how big he's getting. Russ is easily... Bro, he is, I'm, I'm six foot. It's kind of hard to see with that, with that frame. I'm six feet tall. Dude, he is definitely eight feet tall. Like eight, eight feet long, not tall, sorry. I know I keep taking my eyes off him. But dude, he is getting absolutely huge. Look how big this freaking animal is. I can't even, can't even get him in the whole frame because I don't have a wide angle on. But dude, he's getting absolutely massive. So we're gonna get him back in his cage right here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna top off some waters in this room while I'm waiting for this chondro python to defrost. And then we're gonna go ahead and feed Russ. And that'll be that. Just a little King Cobra video showing you the size of him. 
doing absolutely fantastic. I'll probably feed these little blue ants Solaris. These guys are growing like freaking weeds. It's, I'll show you. Boom, like look how big these little freaking vipers are getting. Like how badass are those snakes? They're some of my favorites. Man. Like, they're just so blue and cool. One thing I have noticed about these cages, or these lights in particular, you see how it has that little flickering on it? Not the best for filming, but it does the job. Everything else is doing great, everything is eating super healthy, everything's growing, everything in this room is doing absolutely fantastic. My little freaking, my green death worms, the mambas that I got from Dingo are, I don't know, they're kinda, they're kinda on the crazy side. They weren't that bad the first two days, now they're a little bit on the flighty side. They like to do the mambas and king cobras. They do this like death roll thing where you grab them by the tail, you get them, you get them out with a hook, and then they just start twisting their whole body and they start death rolling. And it's a pain in the ass, and it makes them really hard to handle. So that's the only downside about those guys. And they're fast as crap. So they'll really make you shit your britches if you ain't uh, watching out. So let's uh, let's go grab this Condro. We'll give Rusty a nice meal. Hey, bro. So he's all fired up right now. You see? He's all smelly. Now look, look at this. Oh my god, it came flying out the cage at me. Look how big this conjure is. I'm trying to like get away from it. Look, his head's right here. Head's right there, dude. There he goes. Alright, so he bit the body of the snake. Look how big this freaking conjure python is. Look at this. Easy four foot conjure. Man, I'm telling you what, it is really hard to film by yourself with a freaking tripod and dangerous. So we're probably just gonna finish feeding Rusty and then I'm gonna go about my business without filming. Just cause you saw how amped up he gets. When you're feeding your snakes, obviously they smell everything. They get all nimbly bimbly and then they act all crazy. As you can see, he just came flying out of his cage at me and I'm home alone right now so I really don't feel like getting uh, murked by Rusty. So but you can see, look how big he is. He's just, you bit him in the freaking stomach. Now the reason why I bit him in the stomach is normally I give him the head first, so he always bites the head first, it just makes his life a little bit easier. Right now he thinks he's killing the snake, so he's just got a good grip on it, but we're gonna try to get it adjusted here in just a second for him. Relax, bro. He's huffing and puffing. He's not happy that I'm trying to watch him right now. I'm just going through, I'm still going through comments, man. Like, there's literally, let's see, yesterday's video is 82,000 views. We got 2,600 comments. It's crazy. So it's really hard to keep track of this crap. This guy, Bruce, though. This is obviously staged. You just faked your, you just faked your animals escaping for views. There's only a couple of these. But like, bro, for someone to think that I would fake that, it's just, <laughs> what did he just say? This dude is horrible at keeping track of his possessions. He's missing his iguanas and he's missing a finger. Like, dude, what? People are just trolls, man. I think it's funny. I, I think it's hilarious. The things that people say online is just absolutely hilarious. But there's only, out of every, out of every 200 comments, there's one person that's like, oh, you're just a fake YouTuber, blah, blah, blah. It's just, why would I do that? It's just, it's crazy. Like, why the hell would I do that? And then everybody keeps telling me to get cameras. I do have cameras. Like I said before, I have cameras. I'm getting better ones. Oh, look at Rusty. He's finally fighting the head. About time, dude. Holy crap. I've been sitting here just reading messages. Hella bored. We've been here for like 30 minutes already. Just trying to eat one freaking python. Thank God for editing. Look at him. But yeah, but for somebody to think that I would stage something like this, and dude, what? Like, it's just absolutely crazy. Like literally, there's emails of, just, just, I'm, I'm not even, I'm just, I'm wasting my time entertaining these stupid people. There's no reason, no reason. If you think, if you think I faked it, then you're just an idiot. And I'm, I'm not sorry for calling you an idiot because if you're telling me that I'm, t why would I fake losing some of my favorite animals? Like. Just makes no sense. Woo! All right, here we go. Game time. Look how fast he eats these things, dude. He just keeps getting faster and faster. Let me try to uh, move this out of the way a little bit. There we go. Look at that. Oof. Look at that. 
freaking, what a beautiful snake, man. God, I'm so lucky to have this guy. He's just absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Ooh, sorry, buddy. Relax, dude. Look at that. Oh, my God. Absolutely gorgeous, man. Fast, dude. He's already halfway done with this four-foot chondro. Quick. And he just ate a ball python? What is today? Today is what, over Tuesday. So, yeah, dude, last Tuesday he ate a ball python. So it's literally been a week since he's ate. I mean, the ball python was not that big. It was maybe like uh, maybe 24-inch ball python. So nothing too crazy. It's definitely not like this four-footer that he's slamming down right now. But, dude, this is why he's growing so fast. I feed him, dude, I feed him a steak probably every 10 days. I mean, like I just said, it's only been a week since he's had his last meal. But normally when he's eating these bigger prey items, I'm feeding him every 10 days. So it's like, we're not really necessarily power feeding. Um, power feeding would be obviously a lot more power feeding. It isn't really the healthiest thing to do with your snakes because you obviously do not want to have an obese snake. Obesity in any kind of animal is not good, including humans, man. Like you need to take care of yourselves. Eat right eat healthy don't eat too much you know what i mean like that just causes way too many problems like i last thing i would want is for this animal to get big and if he's too thick just like like my like batman and robin they were way too big when i first got them and now they're prone to they were prone to fatty liver disease which can kill your animal and i would never want that to happen because these animals can live for 20 plus years and I want to enjoy them for as long as possible. Don't want anything to happen to my guys. You know what I mean? But look at the pattern on that chondro. Oh my god. It's a beautiful snake. Beautiful snake eating a beautiful snake. It's great. Sorry, the lighting here is a little crazy today. Just because this is the only cage that has the lights on right now because we're just filming in here. All the other lights, it's what, almost 5 o'clock, so... I think at like 4.30 now, now that it's daylight savings time, everything shuts off a little bit early and let it cool down as the days cool down. Kind of replicate how it is for them in the wild, you know, with according to the time change. So we always like to switch it up. I gotta adjust a couple timers out there too. So I know I've talked about this before, but the whole Taruk situation kind of sucks right now. Um, my neighbors, my neighbors are still complaining. We still call the cops every now and then. It's been a few weeks since they've called the cops. I know a lot of you were commenting down below and you guys were like, oh, maybe your neighbors did something to your iguanas. Maybe they let the cage open. They wouldn't do that. They're not that stupid. Um, I would hope. But, uh, yeah, they, they still complain about my bird, and that sucks. So I got to really figure out what to do with her. Um, I'm going to make a video about what I've been thinking about and, uh, you know, how I'm going to go about it. Everything's crazy right now. Like my tattoo shop, I'm, you know, I own a tattoo shop. That's what I do for a living. And I tattoo full time. Ooh, you see that? You went a little crazy right there. So it's hard for me to have, I don't have as much time for Taruk as I would like. And I can't necessarily, I can't take her to my shop. It's not like Richard. Richard's a tiny little dog. I could easily take him to work. I got plenty of time for him. He, Richard goes absolutely everywhere with me. It's not like Taruk. Taruk, I wish Taruk was nice so I could take her everywhere and give her enrichment all day and play with her and do all that stuff. But she's now, she's sexually mature. She's super mad all the time. And she's very hard to handle. And like, dude, I'm a tattooer. I don't, I can't get bit by a macaw every single day. It messes my hands up. I already have nerve damage in my hands. And it's just detrimental to my career. So I really need to figure out, I'm even thinking about maybe like, just a temporary aviary or something, you know what I mean? Maybe find a friend down here that already has a big aviary and macaws. Maybe they can keep track of her until I get my big property. Oh, he's almost done here. The property, things get a little bit more chill. Then I obviously I could take Taruk back, build a bigger aviary, do the whole rescue thing like I originally wanted to do, and things would be awesome, you know? But yeah, it just sucks because everything got kind of pushed back. You know, I thought I was going to be ready for everything. And, you know, obviously with the whole COVID thing and every, every the price of everything went up, you know. So like any of the market is crazy high right now. There's just a lot of things. So it's like I wanted to be out of this house already. But just, you know, I got to things cost money, man. 
Before this whole pandemic started, I used to pay $60 for a case of gloves, which is 10 boxes, okay? Now I pay 220 boxes of gloves. And just imagine how many gloves a tattoo shop, a busy tattoo shop goes through. It's a lot of freaking gloves. Hey, bro, are you just listening to me? You just hanging out, bro? You just hanging out with dad, dude? Yeah. So, things will, things will look up more. I just got to keep on grinding, keep on saving money. And hopefully we'll be out of here. Oh, maybe by the end of the year, maybe by the beginning of next year. I would like to have a market to chill out a little tiny bit um, before I start looking for some properties. I definitely want to be maybe like a little bit more north towards Chandler. Chandler is probably an hour and 20 minutes north of here. So maybe if I could be within like 20 minutes. If I can be, I wouldn't mind being an hour away from work. You know what I mean? Because next year, next year I'm only tattooing three days a week. Right now I'm working five days a week and I'm getting burnt out and I want to do more YouTube stuff. And it's hard working five days a week, tattooing five days a week, and then my only two days off, I do YouTube, which is it's still a lot of work. Like, sitting here and talking to a camera and doing all these things while filming. You guys, it might seem pretty easy, but it's definitely not. Especially, it's a lot, you know? So, next year, tattooing less, YouTube and more. I'm only going to focus on really super... I'm booked for this entire year, like, already completely solid. I'm not even booking for next year because I'm going to be very, very strict about who I tattoo next year. I'm only doing big pieces. They're only going to be anim neo-traditional animals and lady heads and stuff like that. Um, I know a lot of you still email me about getting booked. I do. I appreciate everybody that hits me up to book, and I, I'm sorry that I can't book any appointments right now. I'm just... I'm just so slammed with work. It's just absolutely crazy. COVID has, you know, it's, yeah, it makes everything more expensive. But, like, dude, honestly, like, I'm busier than I've ever been. You know, I've never, I've been, I normally stay, like, six months booked out. But I've never been booked for an entire, like, I'm a year out. Like, literally, you want to get tattooed by me, you have to wait at least a year. Which is, it, it sucks, you know. I hate, I hate telling people that. They're, like, some people hit me up. They're, like, oh, I'm going to be in town in july we're so stoked to come in and meet you and get tattooed and i gotta be the one that's like oh man that's, it's awesome you guys come say hi at the shop but i'm just busy like i'm booked it's a blessing but it still sucks you know telling people no i don't like telling people no you know what i mean it's just it's whatever you know i appreciate you guys i know you guys want to get tattooed and get work done i got plenty of other tattooers at the shop busy shop i just got to get back to it man like <sighs> Sorry for rambling. I'm just talking to you guys. Got a lot of things on my mind. Just talking, you know. You guys listen. You guys comment down below. Let me know what you think, man. The whole Tarouk situation has got me messed up. You know, I love her to death. But it's just, I feel bad for her, you know. Like, I wish I had more time. I wish I could get... I honestly did. I wish I could get her another bird. Like, if she had another friend, like if I got her a boy McCall, that dude she could do her thing with, even if she didn't like me anymore. Like, a lot of people said that, like, oh, if you get her a mate, then she's really gonna hate you. That's honestly fine. Like, I could deal with that. I just want her to be happy. Like, I want her to have, like, somebody to play with all day or somebody to keep her, just keep her entertained all day. Obviously, I buy her toys and all that stuff, but she destroys her toys in five minutes. And then she's back to being a psychopath. So, we just got to figure some things out. Not too worried about it, man. I just got to put some positive vibes out there in the air and, you know, everything will happen. You know, that's how it always is. You just got to just gotta roll with the punches, man. You got to stay positive, positive, positive outlook, positive outcome. You know what I mean? If I just sit here all day and I'm like, oh, my life sucks and I got, I'm not... I'm too busy, I don't have time for myself, yada, 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 woe is me, you know, dude, nothing's gonna happen with that, you're just gonna, you're just gonna be a baby, you need to man up, step up to the plate, take care of your business, you know, and that's what we're doing, right, Russ, right, dude, you're crazy, yeah, look at that, see that, see that crazy boy, dude, I'm just trying to talk to my friends, alright, that's it, guys, I just wanted to make a little video. I was just bored. I got a, I got these couple days off before the tattoo convention. Just to take care. I got to take care of all the animals. I got to take care of my shop. I got to make sure they have all the supplies that they need. I got to make sure Alex has everything that he needs to take care of everything here. I got another one of my friends. Like I said before, he's staying at my house all weekend, locked and loaded, just holding it down. Um, I just got the new security cameras. They're freaking badass, man. I got little motion detectors all over the goddamn place and sensors and freaking infrareds and all sorts of crap. It's like Fort Knox up in this mofo right now. So, I feel a little bit safer. 
it's cool. But hopefully that never happens again because it sucked, dude. It was, it was it was one of the worst t- 24 hours I've had in a while, man. Like you, it was just it was terrible, dude. It was not cool. Happy that is over with. Happy I got my iguanas back. I literally I woke up this morning, and I walked outside and I was just so happy to see them, dude. I just walked in the cage and laid down on the floor with them. Khaleesi crawls on me and she cuddles with me and stuff. This is great. So, till next time, guys. I'm out of here. I'm going to get off this floor. i got to start cleaning some more animals and feeding some stuff. I'm not going to film it just because it's super dangerous. You saw how dangerous that was at Rusty right now. He just came flying out the cage at me. I'm just... i got to do these things safe. Tomorrow we're filming again. I'm going to do a more in-depth Taruk video. I have to clean her cage tomorrow. I have to put her in her little travel cage because she goes into the smaller cage. That way Alex can get in and out of the cage without getting murdered. Um, so we're going to just go over how I take care of her and what's going on with her more in depth than I did today. Um, and maybe make another couple snake videos before I leave town, you know, and a dive video. I have to leave. I have to go to Tampa on Thursday, but there's also a hunt on Thursday morning. So I'm like, dang, maybe I can go diving in the morning, shoot some fish, make a dope video. And then I'll just bounce to Tampa. That sounds like a better idea. I think I need to make some dive videos. My GoPro, wait till you see this dive video. Uh, somebody found my GoPro. It's a crazy story. So I'll tell you about that. I'm not going to spoil it for you right now. I'll tell you about that later. But till next time, y'all, I'm out of here. Got to take care of the animals. Feed everybody. They're hungry just like Russ. So peace out. Love you. Later.